All right, we are going to take you to the Liberal campaign. There you see Krisha Freeland speaking. She is about to introduce Liberal leader Justin Trudeau, who will be making an announcement in Cambridge, Ontario. So let's listen in. Uh, for the warm welcome to this amazing place, I'd like to start by acknowledging that we're here on the traditional territories of the neutral, the Anishinaabeg and the Haudenosaunee. Ça me fait un tellement grand plaisir d'être ici parmi vous aujourd'hui. Être ici avec nos candidats excellents et être ici dans une usine avec une famille qui fait un travail extraordinaire. Cambridge and Southwest, this part of Ontario, is very special to me. And it's special to me because we stood together and we fought together in the NAFTA trade negotiations. And that's actually the first thing that Rana and Paul talked to me about when I walked in earlier today. When Donald Trump threatened to tear up NAFTA, that was a threat to all of Canada. And that was a threat to people right here in Cambridge. And I am so proud of the way we worked together. I'm so proud of the way that our government was able to stand up for people here. And you know what? We did it. We won. You guys are still able to export to the United States on privileged terms, thanks to our collective success then. And the same thing happened when COVID hit. When COVID hit, our government, our prime minister knew this was an extraordinary moment. And we knew that we had to be there for Canadians. We had to be there for Canadian businesses. We had to be there for Canadian families. And we were. And places like this amazing operation, they needed a little bit of support when COVID first hit. And I was so pleased to learn today how that support from the government got them through, helped them to get through, because I know it's actually your hard work that got you through, but that initial support helped them to get through the initial shock of COVID. And now they are doing better than ever. So we know that when you have a government that is prepared to stand with Canadians, to stand up for them, to stand up and support them, it works for everyone. We are here today, the Prime Minister is here today, and we're here to support him in a very important announcement. An announcement of our positions and our commitments on the environment and on the fight against climate change. And I want to really remind Canadians both how important that fight is and also how important that economic transition is. The world knows we need to shift to an economy that is no longer dependent on fossil fuels, to an industrial manufacturing economy that is no longer dependent on fossil fuels. That's not a question mark anymore. That is where the world is going. And for Canada, really, the only choice for us, the only question for us is, will we be in the lead in that green transition or will we be left behind? Well, I can tell you what Paul and his team, Paul and Rana and their team are doing is being in the lead. And what our government has done and is going to further commit to today is to be in the lead. Because we know that climate transition is full of opportunity. It is full of opportunity for jobs, for new businesses, opportunity for Canada. And we know that for Canada to make the most of that opportunity, we need to invest in it. That's why since 2015, our government has invested $100 billion 
in the fight against climate change. Since the fall economic statement alone, we've invested $53 billion in the fight against climate change. And we have in Canada, and I really want to emphasize this because Canada alone among the world's major industrial economies has a robust price on pollution. And that price is going to go up to $170 a ton by 2030. This is a powerful and effective mechanism in our country's green transition. It is driving the amazing change we have seen here, and it is going to drive even more change. And that is something our Prime Minister and our government put in place. So what we are offering to Canadians is a plan to move forward, to move forward with the green transition, to move forward for jobs and growth. But I have to say what the Conservatives are offering is a plan for Canada to move backwards. They have said quite explicitly that they will rip up the early learning and child care agreements, which our government has concluded with eight provinces and territories covering 47% of Canadian children. And that is a plan that Ontario needs, that Cambridge needs for jobs and growth. Speaking earlier today with Paul and Rana, I learned they have increased their workforce by 40%, but they are doing so well, they want to hire more people. So if you're listening, please give these guys a call. Seems like a great place to work. But some of the people who they are hoping to hire, apprentices they are hoping to train, are women, young women. Our early learning and child care system will allow young women to be trained in the skilled trades to do fantastic jobs like the ones available here. They will help business people, they will help Cambridge families. The Conservatives are also saying they want to move backwards on climate action and on climate targets. And I can tell you, as Finance Minister, not only, you know, we all know that's wrong for the planet. We all know that's wrong for our children and grandchildren, but it does not make economic sense. The global economy is going green. If we want the world to continue to buy things made by brilliant engineers and business people like the great family here today, we have to help them. We have to help the whole Canadian economy make that green transition. That is what our government is committed to doing. And, and I do want to point out, and I hope some of the journalists maybe will talk a little bit to Paul and Rana, the green transition that they have been working on right here actually makes business sense. This is a family that is doing it to save the planet and for their, for their wonderful daughter who's here with us. But they have found it helps the bottom line, it helps with jobs and growth. And that is going to be the case across the country. That is what our, our government is investing in. That's what we're committing to doing even more of in our platform. And then finally, our government is 100% committed to getting Canada vaccinated. And again, speaking as finance minister, that is the single best, the single most powerful economic policy. Every single eligible Canadian getting vaccinated is the best way to fully reopen our economy and for Canada to come roaring back. And again here, the Conservatives are letting us down. So, in conclusion, let me just thank the great people of Cambridge, Ontario. Let me thank this wonderful family that is creating jobs and fighting climate change at the same time and is a demonstration that these things go together. And let me say to the people of Cambridge, Ontario, to the people of Ontario and the people of Canada, we had your backs during the NAFTA fight. We had your backs in the fight against COVID. 
We're going to have your backs in our continued fight against climate change. And the person who is our leader in that effort is our Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau. We're going to hear from him in a minute. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. Thank you uh, so much, Minister Freeland. It is a pleasure and an honour to have you here in Cambridge. I have the uh, privilege to introduce to you a leader who his, his vigilance, his vision, his tenacity has helped us get through the worst parts of COVID-19. I consider him a friend, a colleague, and I am proud to stand with him in the member, as a member of parliament for this riding in, 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 in Ottawa. Please help me welcome the Prime Minister of Canada, Justin Trudeau. Bonjour tout le monde. Thank you, Brian. It's great to be here with you, with Bardish, with Raj, Lloyd, Tim, and Valerie, a Liberal team that's ready to keep moving forward. I also want to take a moment to recognize Christia Freeland, who's with us here today. As Deputy Prime Minister and Canada's first woman finance minister, you've rolled out historic measures to rebuild our economy, support workers and step up for families, all while fighting climate change. As Paul was telling me earlier, if you wanted to get things done, he turned to his wife Rana uh, to uh, get a lot of the hard work done on transforming uh, their business here to be greener. And I am so proud to lean on you, Christia, as an extraordinary woman leader uh, to move uh, us forward into the future as we need to be. So thank you, Paul uh, and Emily and Rana, uh, for being here today. Paul, you actually told me that when your daughter Emily was born, you thought about the kind of world you wanted for her. Clean air, good jobs, a bright future. So you stepped up to help make that happen. You cut your company's emissions by more than three quarters, all while hiring more workers. Paul, you know what it means to lead on both climate and jobs. And today, I'm here to talk about how we'll keep leading right alongside you. Mes amis, quand on a formé le gouvernement il y a six ans, le Canada n'avait pas de plan climatique. Il y avait de plus en plus de pollution. Et le gouvernement conservateur précédent était resté les bras croisés, alors que les travailleurs étaient laissés pour compte dans une économie mondiale en pleine évolution. In the uh, green plan, I'm thinking of the workers I've met in the Lion Electric or uh, at the steel company that now have a stable job for years to come. Friends, we've made real progress. And here's where we'll go next. If you make electric cars in the GTA or work on carbon neutral aluminum in Quebec, I don't have to tell you that green jobs are good jobs and good careers. That's why a Liberal government will keep investing in clean industries that power our future, grow our economy and protect our environment. C'est le moment de poursuivre nos efforts our efforts. Et voici comment and on this va is how we'll do it. First, we will make sure to have an electric network that's carbon neutral uh, before 2035. And it's also how we'll make sure that in Canada will be zero emission by 2035. To get there, we'll invest in made in Canada models, create more charging stations, and ensure that these vehicles are affordable. From the start of your day to the end, we've got a plan to keep our air clean and keep people voting. Now, there is a lot you can do in your, in your everyday life to fight climate change. But let's be realistic. 
Over a quarter of Canada's emissions come from our oil and gas sector. We need the leadership of these industries to decarbonize our country. That's why we'll make sure oil and gas emissions don't increase and instead go down with achievable milestones every five years from now until Canada reaches net zero in 2050. And to ensure no one gets left behind, we'll invest $2 billion for workers and communities in Alberta, Saskatchewan and Newfoundland and Labrador so local economies can continue to prosper. We know people get it. We know people want their kids to have good jobs. So we'll be there to invest and help communities thrive in a transformed economy. Because our plan for climate, it's also a plan for jobs. My friends, together we get to decide the future we want to build. For workers here and right across the country. For kids like Emily. And frankly, I don't even want to think about what happens if Aaron O'Toole were in charge. He has said it directly. He would go back to the Harper era of weak plans for climate and no plans for jobs. Canada lost a decade to the previous government. And after the progress we've made since, we can't lose the next four years too. Do you think that the worker looking for a job has time to wait? That the student who's taken to the streets will just sit by? Think about it. There is a generation of young people voting for the first time in this election who don't remember what the Stephen Harper era was like. You see everything that we've done as in the last six years as a baseline. And you know that we need to go further. I hear you. The sirens in the background may remind us that this is a climate emergency. That's why we will move faster and be bolder. Because as you remind me every single day, you as young people from coast to coast to coast, yes, this is an emergency, and no, half measures won't do. And to those who still deny climate change is real, who still think our ambitions are too ambitious, a few of whom certainly showed up today, to you, let me say this. We didn't make up the climate crisis. Just ask someone from Lytton. We didn't invent the idea of burning less fossil fuel or the concept of net zero. Just ask Paul here at Veriform. This is the way the world is going. This is where Canadians know we need to go. Canada succeeds by leading right now. We build a brighter future by stepping up right now. And if you agree, join me. Mes amis, il faut faire we le must bon choix. do the pour good choice for the fight against climate changes, for create good and uh, jobs. We chose to increase the income tax to the 1% of the richer and to lower them for the middle class. At the same time, Aaron O'Toole is choosing to give more options in health care for the rich and less for others. you and your family safe, like making sure everyone on a plane or train is vaccinated, not everyone agrees, and particularly not Aaron O'Toole. That is what's at stake in this election. Mes amis, je suis très enthousiaste quand je pense à tout ce qu'on peut continuer d'accomplir ensemble. C'est pourquoi je demande de nous appuyer pour la planète pour nos jobs today, in the future, pour des maisons et des services de garde and abordables. For some um, daycare that is affordable for a stronger Canada for everyone. This is our moment. This is our choice. And if you're with me, I'm ready for more hard work. I'm ready for hope. 
I'm ready for everything we can achieve with faith in each other, with a belief in what this country can be. Let's choose forward for everyone. Merci. Thank you. Mr. Trudeau, we'll now start the 20 minute question. Start again, Glenn McGregor. Uh, Mr. Trudeau, uh, good morning. After your rally was canceled in Bolton, Ontario, you tried to extend sort of an olive branch to the protesters. And you said, like a lot of Canadians, they've had a difficult year. Yesterday, we saw videos emerging from an event earlier in the day on Friday in the same area where adults are yelling at the parents of a child, a little boy, three or four years old, because he's wearing a mask. I think a lot of Canadians are wondering, are you not coddling this point of view? At what point do you speak out, denounce this as something much darker? Oh, I have been very, very clear that uh, putting volunteers and supporters at risk is absolutely unacceptable, and that's why we cancelled Friday night's event, because we couldn't ensure the safety of those parents, of those kids, of those elders who came out for a political event. That's unacceptable. But I do think we need to understand that people have had a tough year, that the world is changing rapidly, that, that there is fear, there is anxiety out there. But let me be also very, very clear. I am absolutely resolute in my conviction to continue to move Canada forward. And that's the choice people get to make in this election. We are absolutely steadfast in needing to continue to move forward with vaccinations to keep Canadians safe, including those four or five year old kids who can't yet get vaccinated. I am absolutely firm on the need to do even more to fight against climate change. And people who want to ignore the science around vaccines, people who want to ignore the science around, uh, around uh, climate change, they don't get to choose how Canada moves forward. Canadians, all Canadians, get to step up and be heard in this election, and the choice couldn't be clearer. When we cancel the event of Friday night, it's because kids, the elderly, the sympathizers that came to support, to participate in a political event, they were not in safe. And this is unacceptable. People should be able to feel in safety in this country, whatever their political views. And this is something that I will always stand up for. At the same time, let me be also firm. Even if we understand that these people had a, maybe some difficult years and that made them more anxious and scared, yes, maybe of, to be mad, I will not go back. I will not uh, stop in the need of using science to protect every Canadian with vaccinations and to continue to fight against climate changes because that's how we will support each other. That's how we're going to create some good jobs for the future. And what we're seeing right now is that the Canadians have an important choice to make, but it's not those that go and protest that will make that choice. It will be the majority of Canadians, and I'll be there to go forward, everyone together. Uh, you've already cancelled one rally. Your message today was overshadowed here by this. It was very distracting for people listening on television at home, hearing, trying to hear your message on, on climate change. Can you keep campaigning the same way now? Can you keep doing public events that, in one case, you say put the safety of campaign volunteers, people coming out, uh, putting uh, the police into the line of fire here. Can you keep campaigning the same way? Everything we've done over the past year and a half, indeed over the past six years, has been focused on keeping Canadians safe. And we will continue to do that. But part of keeping Canadians safe is making sure that everyone gets vaccinated, making sure that our kids are safe, 
making sure that we continue to move forward on being even more ambitious on the fight against climate change. These are the ways we will continue to make Canadians safer and more prosperous in the years to come. So no, I'm not going to back down on a message that Canadians know is the right path forward. And that's why Canadians need to choose to move Canada forward in this pivotal time. Bonjour, M. Trudeau, Louis Blouin de Radio-Canada. Louis Blouin from uh, CBC. I understand that you don't want to send back on your message, but at a certain point, isn't it obvious that you may have to change the type of campaign events that you will make to avoid to be totally distracted or that the tension can be uh, put? I think that in a certain way, we are seeing the reason why we must make an important choice as a country that we're in a moment where the choices that we're going to take as citizens, as country, as government, will have an impact, an enormous impact in the months to come and how we'll be able to end this pandemic, but also how we will rebuild for the years to come. Yes, there are some people that have some very different perspectives, but that's why that we need to hear clearly not only Canadians, that uh, all Canadians that will express themselves uh, by voting on the direction that we must take as a country. And let me uh, repeat once again that nothing that these people can say that will me, make me stand back on my ambition for Canadians to fight against climate changes, to keep people safe with vaccination, because that's the, uh, the forward way. I will ask you a question on climate. You have uh, many promises, uh, some uh, climate its uh, targets that uh, you've brought, but uh, Canada, uh, the same thing, is not even getting the 30 percent for 2025. So why should people believe you with targets? Quite contrary, Canada is actually uh, on its way if we don't do anything else, just with the measures that we always put in place, the Canada will get 36 percent. Uh, under the level uh, in 2030. So already we've got some reduced direction of 36 percent. Every total only wants 30 percent. So he wants to bring more uh, emission in Canada, more pollution in Canada. We are reducing the emissions uh, way above the, uh, the targets that we put uh, of uh, Stephen Harper, but effectively we must do more. Anybody can talk about about targets, and we see some, from some other parties that uh, what we need is a plan, and that's what we need. And that's why today I'm here with Paul in his factory, in his industry, to show that to make this a green turn with more ambition to fight against climate changes, it's good not only for environment, it's also good for the economy. And we will continue with our investments with uh, vehicles of zero emission and to do some uh, work for aluminium uh, with Aldora. Uh, we will keep, uh, do all we can and all what we must do to to protect the future generations. Uh, I'm also going to ask you about climate change. Um, so you submitted the new targets to the United Nations last month. How does the plan that you've presented today uh, get us closer to those targets? And they're still the least ambitious of the G7. We have demonstrated not just incredibly ambitious targets, but we have demonstrated over the past years an ambitious plan to reach those targets. We are the only one of our comparable countries with a full-scale, broad-based price on pollution that will rise to $170 a tonne by 2030. And that gives the clear signal to businesses, to industries, on the need for innovation, on the need for further investment, on the need to reduce our, our, uh, our emissions. That's why we're announcing today that emissions in the oil and gas sector will no longer rise, will decrease 
every year, as we've seen, many of the largest oil and gas companies have committed to net zero by 50. Well, our plan announced today gets us there in those five-year increments. We're announcing zero emission vehicles are the only new vehicles to be sold in Canada as of 2035, and to get there by 2030, 50% of all new vehicles in Canada will be zero emission. We are going to continue to step up in investing in innovation, in research, in good jobs for workers like we did at Algoma Steel and DeFasco in turning coal coal-fired steel plants towards electric-fired steel plants. And part of doing that is to make sure that that electricity is 100% net zero by 2035. This is the most ambitious plan to fight climate change Canada has ever seen, and it's a plan that we're going to be able to deliver. Following up. Uh, so we're two, week in, two weeks into the campaign, and uh, there's still a lot of observers who are uh, feeling that your party doesn't even really know why it called an election. So, you know, your, some of your candidates seem nervous about the way the campaign is going and the protests and the security threats. You've said that you won't change how you're proceeding in terms of, uh, you know, because of the protests. But what are you doing to address concerns that you don't have a coherent message for Canadi Canadians? I think Canadians saw over the past year and a half, how incredibly ambitious and bold we had to be to counter the crisis of COVID. And we demonstrated every step of the way that our values and our approach was about having Canadians' backs. And that's exactly what we did. Well, what we've seen is the decisions on how we move forward, how we end this pandemic, how we rebuild better for the coming years, aren't going to be taken a year from now, aren't going to be taken two years from now. They're going to be taken right now, this fall, by Canada's government. And what we learnt from this climate, this uh, COVID crisis, we will be applying to the climate crisis, to the housing crisis, to reconciliation, to making sure that everyone has good jobs and careers that carry them through and create opportunities for their kids. That is a big decision that Canadians need to make because the choice is very clear. We see Conservatives choosing to be less ambitious on the fight against climate, to do less to keep people safe with vaccinations, to do less on childcare, scrapping the $10 a day agreements that we've signed across the country and signing no new ones. There is a crystal clear choice that needs to be made right now for the future we want to live. This is why we are talking with Canadians now about how to move forward for everyone. Jim? Good afternoon, Mr. Trudeau. Travis Danrash, CBC News. I, I know that you've said that you understand people are upset and that you're not going to back down on your message. I just witnessed a, a black member of the security detailed racially attacked and called a disgusting slur. A female officer was subjected to misogynistic slurs. There were death threats against you hurled in this crowd. So I'm just wondering, what is the bar here in terms of what you'll subject yourself to and your staff to? And what if somebody gets hurt? Because of all of this. First of all, I want to take a moment to thank the extraordinary police officers, uh, local and national, who do an amazing job in both keeping people safe and allowing Canadians to express themselves. That's what an election is all about. We may disagree with them, and of course, we will always condemn violence and hatred. Indeed, we've strengthened uh, the laws and rules around that over the past years and will continue to do as we step up on the fight against systemic discrimination. But this needs to make us ever more convinced of the importance of the choice in this election. Do we fall into division and hatred and racism and violence? Or do we say, no, you know what? That doesn't work to get us to back down. That won't scare Canadians from standing up for what's right. And I know Canadians. I've met with people from coast to coast to coast. And if you threaten them with violence and try to scare them away from what's right, we double down and we move forward into the future we know our kids and grandkids deserve. 
Écoutez, je veux prendre d'abord un moment pour remercier tous ces agents de la paix, ces officiers peace officers, locaux et nationaux and locals qui sont and là nationals that are there, pour non seulement protéger les protect médias, the media, my team, and myself, but also protect Canadians, including the Canadians that want to be heard during this election. Because it's important that we continue uh, to be heard, but we will always refuse to accept and condemn the violence, the racism, the intolerance, the aggression, and but understand that all the threat of violence to try to scare to candidates, to scare Canadians, that won't work. I know Canadians. All my life, I've been seeing them across the country, and I know that nobody will back down of what we must do, because there are some bullies that are trying to scare them. It's not what we are stepped up time and time again to get through long winters, to fight in World War I and World War II, to fight every day for a better future for our kids with all the choices we make, Canadians won't back down, and neither will I. Following Mr. up. Mr. Trudeau, uh, I, I'm just wondering, you know, you, you are trying to get your message out. You believe that it's resonating with Canadians. So I'm just wondering how you square that with the polls that show you, uh, you know, losing ground in key demographics to the Conservatives. And also, I'm just wondering if you can reflect on the campaign so far and if there's anything you would change or any missteps that you think you've made. I think this is a really important time for Canadians to choose what kind of future they want. Yes. Uh, we're hearing uh, people express uh, anger about the direction this country is, is taking. That is absolutely their right to express their concerns, and they will be able to express them at the ballot box. But I also know that Canadians from coast to coast to coast want to choose a brighter future, want to continue to step up against climate change, know that good jobs and careers and opportunities for themselves and their kids come with leading on protecting the environment, know that stepping up to get more women into the workforce with $10 a day childcare is the right thing, not just for families, but for our economy and our communities. Know also that continuing to move forward in respecting science and public health measures and getting people vaccinated before they can get on planes and trains. These are the kinds of things we need to choose right now. And that's the choice Canadians are facing in this election. And Canadians know exactly where I stand on the future we need to build together. Prochaine question. Bonjour, Monsieur Trudeau, Catherine Lévesque, La Presse canadienne. Catherine Lévesque from Canadian Press. I want you to react to conspiracy theory that the conservative candidate uh, Cheryl Gallant saying that we're going in a climate confinement, a climate lockdown. What do you think of these uh, words, she says? First, I find it extremely uh, saddening that there are still some politicians like Cheryl Gallant that are sharing some theories of conspirations to continue to encourage the type of misinformation and hostility in the fight against climate changes and also in other moments with vaccination that are bringing us in the wrong direction. And I think it's Aaron O'Toole's role not only to distance himself of Cheryl Gallant and her, what she said, but also to denounce them and correct uh, to say to Canadians that are supporting Cheryl Gallant to tell people here that they are mistaken, that vaccination is based on science and it's safe and it's our way to get through the pandemic and that climate changes are real and we must keep on fighting with even more ambition against climate changes. Extremely disappointing to see in this day and age politicians, elected politicians, continue to peddle in conspiracy theories. And it's not enough for leaders like Aaron O'Toole to simply distance themselves from those comments. He has to flat out condemn them and then correct the record. 
So the people who are supporting Cheryl Gallant, so people who are shouting out here today understand that they are wrong. Because we know they don't listen to me. Perhaps they will listen to Aaron O'Toole if he tells them that climate change is real. If he tells them that vaccines are safe and secure and demonstrates with real leadership how we're going to move forward as a country to be safer, to be better and more prosperous. That's the choice that Aaron O'Toole needs to make right now around Cheryl Gallant and all of these conspiracy theories being peddled. Je sais euh, savoir, euh, like donc ça know. fait une semaine qu'on vous a demandé It's quand votre week. plateforme électorale allait être publiée. Vous avez demandé quand votre électorale plateforme allait être publiée. Vous avez dit qu'elle allait être fermée cette semaine. Est-ce qu'elle allait être fermée cette semaine? Ou elle allait être avant le débat de septembre? Comme vous avez vu, comme les Canadiens ont vu, on a des plans extrêmement ambitieux, extrêmement ambitieux plans pour ce pays. Pendant la pandémie, on a démontré à quel point on peut faire énormément pour améliorer la vie des gens et de la vie des gens better the life of people to keep them safe and this is what we're continuing to do whether it's for the elderly whether it's for environment whether it's for vaccination and protections and yes i can assure you that our platform is coming in the next few days on friday your government told canadians in afghanistan and uh, afghans who've worked with canada that they should stay in place and there'll be a way Hopefully to get them out. There's a joint statement out today by a number of countries, including Canada, that says the Taliban has, a, uh, has promised that they will allow Canadian foreign nationals and uh, Afghans who work with them to leave. Are we taking the Taliban's word for that, or do you have a way to get those people out? Right now, we have ended the air bridge out of Kabul airport. Uh, supported by Americans and the Allies, but we remain committed and resolute to continuing to get as many people to safety in Canada as possible. And quite frankly, Canadians remain committed to stepping up to welcome Afghan families fleeing violence and terror into their homes, into their communities. So we will continue to work with the international community, continue to put pressure on the Taliban to ensure that people are allowed to leave safely to come to Canada and to come to other countries. Uh, we don't take them for their word, but we will continue to put pressure on them to make sure that through the coming weeks and months, we are continuing to be able to get uh, Afghans to safety in Canada. Following up. Canadian officials have sent emails and texts to those people, the Canadian nationals and the Afghans who've worked with Canada. How many people have they been in contact with to make arrangements about possibly getting out of the country? I know there are uh, regular briefings by ministers and officials on those details, but what Canadians need to know is that our hard-working consular officials, our diplomats and our Canadian armed forces have worked day and night to get people out of Afghanistan, to get people to come to Canada in safety. These are the things we're going to continue to work on. Yes, the air bridge uh, supported by the Americans and other allies, including a lot of Canadian troops uh, on the ground as well, uh, have been there to support people. We will continue to be there uh, to get people to safety. We'll take one last question. Thank you very much, Mr. Trudeau, for taking my question. So um, you're uh, here today to make an announcement on climate change. Uh, climate change will have an impact on many generations to come. I'm just wondering what your message is to many youth who are uh, nervous about their future and, and many youth who will be affected by climate change. Oh, thanks for your question. What's your name? Uh, Wyatt with the Wyatt Sharp Show. <laughs> Pleasure to meet you, Wyatt. Listen, thank you for your question, and you're absolutely right. The decisions we're taking right now will have a huge impact on your future, and we need to get it right. We need to do the right things. And yes, over the past six years, 
we have actually set Canada on one of the most ambitious plans uh, for reduction of emissions. Because it's one thing to say, oh yes, we want to fight climate change, we want to eliminate pollution. It's another thing to actually do the hard work of getting it done. And we got that very well started over the past six years, but we have an awful lot more to do because every single day, I think about your future, Wyatt, I think about my kids' future, I think about Christia's kids' future, I think about Emily, I think about all the kids across the country who are really worried because you see wildfires and you see floods and you see everything being decided for you uh, and not necessarily about you nearly enough. And that's why, Wyatt, you need to be telling your parents, your friends to tell their parents and everyone you know that this election really, really matters. And even if you don't yet have a vote, Wyatt, the people who love you have votes and they need to vote for your future and make the right choice. So thank you, Wyatt, for being here today. Thank you very much, Mr. Trudeau. This is what ends today's press conference. Merci beaucoup, tout le monde. Bonne journée, Thank you, everyone. Thank Have you. a good day.